Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at two Z80 assembly language instructions that, upon first glance, might not seem like they do much of anything really, but as we're going to find out, they actually do something quite important. So those two instructions are XORA and ORA, so let's go ahead and take a look at them right now. Alright, so I've got my ZX Spin assembler open on my computer now, and let's go ahead and take a look at these two instructions. So the first one we're going to take a look at is the XORA instruction, which is also known as exclusive OR A. And the way exclusive OR works is it compares the bits between two bytes. And the way the XORA instruction works is it compares the byte that you give it with the A register. So if you take a look at my program I've got here, the first line here is an ORG instruction that we're all familiar with. And in the second line here, I'm loading a value of FF hexadecimal into the A register which we should know now is a decimal value of 255, which means that sets all the bits to one. And then in my line three here, I have the X or A instruction, which is the exclusive or A instruction. So as I mentioned, what this instruction does is it takes a byte that we give it and it compares it to the A register. In this case, the operand that we're giving it is the A register. So it's going to compare the A register to itself. And as you may know already, the exclusive or works by comparing bits within a byte, and in order for the result to be one, only one of those bits can be on. So if we have two bits and they're both on, the result will be zero. And if we have two bits and they're both off, the result will also be zero. So the only way that a result could be one is if one bit is on and the other bit is zero. So obviously if we're comparing the bits in the A register to the bits in the A register, they're both going to be the same, so they're not exclusive, so the result will always be zero. And that's exactly what we want. The purpose of this instruction is to set the A register to zero. So we could also do this, obviously, by using an instruction such as LDA comma zero, or load A with zero, but that instruction takes two bytes of memory, whereas the X or A instruction takes only one. So in this case, we're saving one byte of memory. And let's bring over our debugger now, and we'll just take a look at how this works. So here we can see our program loaded at address 30,000, LDA comma 255, which is FF in hexadecimal. And here we have our X or A instruction or exclusive or. And now if we take a look at the registers, let's go ahead and step through this program and see how it works. So I'm just going to set the program counter here to the beginning of our program, which is address 30,000, just like that. And now I'll press this step button and it will begin executing the program at address 30,000, which will be our LDA comma 255 instruction right here. So let's go ahead and do that. And now we can see that that has set the value of the A register right here to 255. And now let's go ahead and step through our next instruction, which is the exclusive or A instruction, which is going to compare the bits in the A register with the bits in the A register. And of course, as I mentioned, they're not exclusive. So the result should be zero. And it's going to take that result and put it in the A register. So let's go ahead and step through this and we'll watch that happen. There, so we've just executed this exclusive or A instruction. And we can now see that the A register contains a value of zero because the way this instruction works is it does that comparison and the result of that comparison is zero. And this instruction puts the result back into the A register. So this is an easy single byte instruction we can use to clear the A register and set it to a value of zero. Now let's take a look at our next instruction, which is the OR A instruction. Here I have a program now that uses the OR A instruction. And so again, at the top, I have my org statement. My second line here loads A with a value of FF hexadecimal, which is 255 in decimal which sets all the bits in the byte to one or turns them all on. And then here in line three, we have our OR A instruction. Now the way an OR instruction works is you're comparing bits again within a byte. And if either one of those bits is turned on, then the result will be one. So in this case, it's going to take the bits within a byte that we give it. And again, we're giving it the A register and it's going to compare those bits with the value that's already in the A register. So now it's going to be comparing the A register again with the A register, but now it's using the OR instruction. And the OR instruction doesn't need to be exclusive in this case. So when it's comparing the bits within these two bytes, if either one of the matching bits is turned on, 
then the result will be on as well, or it'll be a 1. And of course, since we're comparing the bits in the A register to the bits in the A register, the result will be exactly what was in the A register to begin with. So you might be wondering what's the purpose of this instruction and what's the value of this instruction if it doesn't actually change the value that's in the A register. Well, although it doesn't change the value that's in the A register, what it does do is it has an effect on the bits in the flag register, and in particular, the carry bit or the carry flag. So if we go back to our debugger now and we take a look at this program, here we can see our program in memory at location 33,000 this time. And here's our LDA comma 255 instruction or load A with the value of 255. And below that we have our OR A instruction, which shouldn't alter the value that's in the A register, but it should affect the bits in the flag register. So let's go ahead and change our program counter to 33,000. And now we'll step through our first instruction, which is to load a value of 255 into the A register. So we'll go ahead and do that now. And there you can see we have a value of 255 in our A register. And now when we execute our next instruction here, which is OR A, it's going to compare the bits in the A register with the bits in the A register, and the result will remain unchanged. However, since the result doesn't produce a carry, it should clear this carry flag here. And the reason we want to be able to do this is because it's very useful to be able to clear the carry flag before doing certain operations in our Z80 assembly language program, where we might use carry as a conditional check in order for our program to perform certain tasks. So before we perform those operations, we need to make sure that our carry bit is not set. And this is one way we can clear the carry bit. So let's go ahead and step through this OR A instruction and we'll watch that the carry bit gets indeed cleared. And there we go. So we've executed our OR A instruction. It compared the value in the A register to the value in the A register, which did not produce a carry. Therefore, the carry bit was cleared. So there we go. We can see how these two instructions are used in Z80 assembly language programming. And although they may not appear initially to do anything particularly useful, they do actually perform very important tasks that we will need to use in our game development journey. So you might want to keep these two tools in your toolbox for the next time you're making a Z80 assembly language program. That's all for now, so thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.